Heading south from here, the next significant settlement is more than a thousand kilometres away, but it's so worth the journey. Well, why don't you have a guess where I am? That's right, halfway between Australia's north coast and the south, and between the east coast and the west. Alice Springs is the place to begin an adventure in the centre. to appreciate fully the scale and beauty of Central Australia. The only way is up. As the world awakes, you can drift across the landscape on a sunrise hot air balloon trip. As an airborne experience, there is nothing to match hot air ballooning. The reason is you've got silence. There is no air noise because you are being carried along at the same speed as the wind. You can just look around 360 degrees and marvel at the world. Back on ground level, Alice Springs, the de facto capital of Central Australia, is an excellent base for exploring the surroundings, with a range of attractions you simply won't find elsewhere. My favourite is the Desert Park, just six kilometres from the centre by road or trail. You'll learn about the ecosystem in this arid area and find delicate beauty amid raw nature. Anzac Hill is the place to get your bearings, to see how Alice Springs fills the valley, and to survey the McDonnell Ranges, which sweep right across the horizon. It's said once these were mountains to rival the Himalayas. That's where I'm heading, in search of a gap, a chasm and a gorge. As the number plates in the Northern Territory proclaim, this is Outback Australia. Time to begin the westbound journey, chasing the sun and some new thrills. The red centre way is splashed with colour. You've got these delicate, stirt desert roses, the floral emblem of the Northern Territory. Grass the colour of pale gold, deep green trees all beneath a lovely blue sky flecked with cloud. Poetry. Just 20 kilometres outside Alice Springs, you reach Simpson's Gap. The magnificent McDonnell Ranges are perforated by gaps, by chasms, by gorges. This is the nearest to Alice Springs. It's the beautiful Simpson's Gap. The Aboriginal name for this region is Chiricha. The gap and surrounding area is an important site to the Aranda people. Next on this Best of the West tour, Stanley Chasm, a Central Australian icon. Over the course of millions of years, water has carved this gorge 80 metres deep. The traditional name is Anko Atwacha, meaning Gap of Water. The European name honours Mrs Ida Stanley, the first school teacher in Alice Springs. The site is Aboriginal owned and operated. Meet General Manager Nova Pomery. It's our um, custodial um, land that we're not owners but caretakers of. Um, it's been passed down from our great grandfather and our families before us. So it represents who we are as a, a family. Um, it has our stories. It has um, our dreamings, it has our totems, so it means everything to us. It means that we're connected always. My final stop on the Red Centre Way, Ormiston Gorge. The nearest sea might be, what, 1,500 kilometres away in either direction, but that doesn't mean you can't feel the sand between your toes. This is just too tempting. 
life reduced to the basics. Sky, rock, water and joy. What a way to start the day. I'm in Wataka National Park, Kings Canyon as it's known. 400 million years ago, this was a windswept plateau covered in sand dunes. Not anymore. I think it's a pretty grand canyon. Erosion means the walls drop 100 meters from the plateau to the floor of Kings Canyon. What I especially love about this place is that once you've enjoyed the view from the top, you can actually walk along the creek bed that formed the canyon. This place is very special for the Matuchara people who are the Aboriginal custodians of Wataka. Plants and trees thrive here because the walls of the canyon shelter them for much of the day from the intense sun. The Laricha people have made the canyon home for more than 20,000 years. Established rather more recently in 1981, Kings Creek Station, which is all things to all travellers. It takes up a large swathe of territory and in one corner there's a roadhouse where you can refuel your vehicle and your stomach, stay overnight and get up-to-date information from the friendly staff, including Jess Martin. Really, honestly, you could spend at least two weeks in the centre. Um, there's just so much to see from Uluru, Wataka, then you've got the East and the West McDonald Ranges. We like guests to feel like they're part of the family by the time they leave, and majority of them really do. I love being remote, um, love being away from the big cities, um, and this place, the red centre of Australia, pulls at your heartstrings, it really gets into your blood. Kings Creek Station covers 2,000 square kilometres. That's about the size of the country of Luxembourg. I wanted to see a bit more of it and I saw they did buggy rides. I thought, how nice, it'll be something like a golf buggy. But then I discovered, yes, I think this is the Stig's Australian cousin, Stigaroo and his mighty machine. It's a dream machine. This extreme version of being chauffeur driven enables you very quickly to appreciate the drama, the rugged terrain and the sheer scale of the property. After a day like that, I desperately want to find somewhere special and convivial to stay. I think I might have identified just the place. The latest addition to Kings Creek Station is a line of sophisticated tents. Well, with dusk chasing the day away, it's rather splendid to arrive here at Drover's Dream. And what have we got here? Beautiful queen bed, perfectly comfortable furniture for a tent. Um, I'm assuming this is the, uh, the bathroom. Look at this proper bathroom with the kind of shower that I think I probably need after this day. I've stayed at many self-catering properties in my time, but never quite like this. At Drover's Dream, you get your own private barbecue. The man who created this top of the range back to basics property is Tony McFadden. Where you are tonight, the drover's dream. This is glamping at its very, very best. It's a very long way to come out and find this place. Yeah, look, it is. But I mean, one thing you would have noted is the, the landscape. Unbelievable. Out here, every step of the way, you fall in love with the place. Uh, yeah, we, we supply memories. 120 kilometres from here, as the crow flies, there's a very celebrated monolith but there are many other dimensions to the red centre of Australia and they will reward your investment in time and energy. 
I've ticked off great sites, met marvellous people and saved the most iconic experience until last. Uluru, the real deal. An icon so crucial to humanity that it appears twice on the UNESCO World Heritage List for both nature and culture. The Ananu, the Aboriginal owners, make it accessible to visitors who respect the land and their traditions. The world's most celebrated monolith is a draw for hundreds of thousands of visitors each year. Uluru was temporarily also known as Ayers Rock, but in 1985 it reverted to its Aboriginal name. Management was handed back to the land's traditional custodians. The area around Uluru was cleared of commerce and an impressive hub for visitors with many activities on offer was created a discreet distance away. All the tourism facilities are 20 kilometres away from Uluru at Ayers Rock Resort, which is owned and operated by Voyages Indigenous Tourism Australia. In the local language, palya is an all-purpose word. It means, hello, goodbye, welcome, and thank you. Palya, a word for all seasons. You can join a Bush Yarns walking tour with enlightenment about the land and its traditions from my guide Nish. Everything around us always speaks to us from even the way the rain comes, the way it smells when it's coming. We can smell when the rain's coming so they know and they know after rain, especially in the central desert area, a lot of our native plants will actually get rid of that old moisture in the fruit in the forms of fruit and flowers so they know after rain to go look for those certain fruits, to go look for those certain flowers that they can get nectar from in the morning. Just simple stuff like that as well. Just, just listening to what the land tells you and what the environment tells you pretty much of what you can look for and what you can hunt at certain times as well. Imagine for a moment that Uluru did not exist. People would still be drawn to central Australia by Katajuta, which means many heads, a formation that rises even higher from the desert than Uluru. The trees in the foreground are desert oaks, the most tenacious trees in these parts. You could come to Central Australia and only see Uluru, but that would just give you half the story. Be generous to yourself and make time for Katajuta. Time for the main attraction, Uluru. The First Nations custodians allow tourists to get close to the rock and sense its power and significance. Two billion years in the making and beautifully sculpted by time. And in places, you can actually touch and feel the surface of this ancient rock. Breathe. Feeling the air changes and unexpected Uluru joy, sometimes wrapping you in heat with the sweet, spicy aroma of the tropics or bringing you freshness after a downpour. Kancha Gorge is one of the great sights of Uluru and this morning it is also an astonishing sound. What you can hear is the noise of burrowing frogs which normally spend their lives buried deep in the sand. If there is a huge rainstorm they will come up and start to mate and their calls Make it sound as though the rock is singing to you. Back at Ayers Rock Resort, there's a fitting way to end your day and your stay. Well, this is all very agreeable. I've signed up for an experience called A Night at the Field of Light. I'm not quite sure what to expect, but it's begun very well. Somebody's given me a glass of beer and a superb sunset view of Uluru.
I've been given a sneak preview of the next stage and look, it's an open air restaurant beneath a vast sky with a superb backdrop. <laughs> The dishes are infused with native ingredients such as baranundi, where the fish has been marinated in lemon myrtle, an Australian herb. This is dining al fresco as I've never known it before. The grand finale an art installation that has infiltrated the desert. The British artist Bruce Munro has used 50,000 glass spheres powered by solar electricity to create a work called Field of Light Uluru. It's a dazzling conclusion to a Northern Territory journey. What a place to end my journey. An image that seems seared on the soul of the world. Uluru rising from the desert at the heart of Australia. A sight to make the spirit sing, whether it's your first or your 100th visit here. Thank you for sharing my journey. I hope you'll be able to make your own very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>